Hey everyone, thought I'd just post a quick update today about the tweeter situation with my DML system. In my last video, I installed these BMR drivers, um, that's balanced mode radiators. If you want to hear more about that, check out the previous video. Uh, but basically I installed those and I installed them on top of the frame. And you'll see in the previous uh, video there, the drivers were sitting like that. My primary kind of concern when I was placing those drivers, um, well, there's two things. One, I've got this big wood frame. Um, it has to go on that frame somehow because the frame is what, you know, it's the frame, it holds everything together. So it needed to go around the frame somewhere. And the second thing, and probably the more important thing, is that it should be somewhere around ear level. So tweeters, high frequency sound, um, as we possibly all know, it tends to uh, fall off quite quickly when you're off axis. So if your tweeter's here and your ears are down here, you're not hearing that kind of direct projected sound. You're hearing the sound that's coming off that driver on an angle, uh, which is probably going to be weaker than the direct sound. So when people are setting up speakers, uh, one of the kind of rules of thumb, I suppose, is that you generally set the tweeters to around your head height when you're listening. So that's just what, what I had in my mind. And so it sat on top and it did the job. The high frequency, it did fill in the gap uh, at that top end quite well. And it was an audible difference, you know, when listening to music, watching TV, um, you could hear that extra bit of clarity in the, in the sound. So I was happy with that. But then as I was listening, I did sometimes get the impression that it wasn't so cohesive that the sound, you know, the high frequency coming from a small driver up here, you could tell that it was coming from a different spot to the rest of the sound, the mid range and then the low. And that's obviously a known phenomenon. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know. But it, you know, it's one thing to kind of read about it and then another thing to actually listen to your own creation and go, oh, that's how it sounds. So I started thinking of other solutions. And it occurred to me that one of the reasons I selected the BMR drivers in the first place, and I talked about this even in my last video, is that they have excellent wide dispersion characteristics similar to the DML panel itself. And I thought that was a nice match it started me thinking, well, maybe they don't need to be exactly at ear height to get a good sound out of them. If they've got a wide dispersion, you're not kind of locked in like that head in a vice type situation. So I thought I'd give myself a little bit more leeway. As I said, having some sound from here, some sound from here wasn't really working for me. The obvious solution seemed to be to bring the high frequency driver closer to the center of the panel. And this, again, not a new concept uh, in speaker design and all that. People talk about acoustic centers and I'll throw a couple of examples up on the screen actually um, for those who aren't familiar, just to understand the concept. So uh, first example, I'll say a, a two-way bookshelf speaker. Uh, you'll have a woofer and a tweeter Generally, you want to put those two drivers as close together as you can so that the sound's coming from you know, roughly the same place. The best example of this might be something like the KEF uh, LS50, where they actually use a coaxial driver. So in this case, the tweeter is inside the woofer. So the center of the tweeter is perfectly aligned with the center of the woofer. All of that sound is coming from the same like, point source out into the room. Uh, likewise, you see on some floor standing speakers, they have perhaps multiple woofers and then a tweeter as the third driver and then another woofer on top. Now, that woofer may or may not be playing exactly the same as the woofers underneath. You know, but the point is that there are some low frequencies coming from both below and above the tweeter so that it actually sounds like a cohesive sound and you don't have tweeters up here and everything else down below. So that's the basics, right? And that's what I'm trying to move towards here. So uh, I'll zoom in, but what you can see here is 
3D printed part uh, again. And basically, it's like a hanger. I've put it on top of the frame here and it just hangs down in front. And I've got the BMR driver there. So it's about 15 to 20 centimeters lower than it used to be. And as you can see, it's like down into the panel. It's better. I listened to the same track before and after, and it was instantly just uh, the, the problem that I thought I could hear just wasn't there anymore. So that's a win, right? The placement of these technically is probably not ideal. So when we talk about acoustic centers, we are of course talking about like, where is the average of the audio output coming from? So it's pretty easy. Like if you have a single woofer, then the acoustic center is the center of that driver, right? The center of the cone. If you have two identical drivers, then the acoustic center will be exactly halfway in between them. So where is the acoustic center on a DML panel? So I went back and revisited a video that I made a few years ago uh, where I measured sound across various points of the panel. And I was just interested in like which parts of the panel have the most output, which have the least, you know, like dead spots, uh, things like that. And Perhaps unsurprisingly, the outcome of that was that I got the most output from the dead center of the panel. If it's true, then the acoustic center is right down here, if it's the same, uh, which still means that there's a fair gap uh, up here. But I'm actually not sure that it's a huge issue in reality with a panel. If you look at the bookshelf, the example of the bookshelf speaker again, you have a woofer like this and a tweeter like this. All of the sound that's coming out of the tweeter is above the whole output of the woofer. Like they're two separate things. Because the DML panel is so big and I'm hanging this down into the panel like that, some of the output of this panel is coming from up here at the top. Perhaps not a huge amount, but some. It's coming from all around the BMR driver. So I do feel that even though it's not exactly in the center of the panel, probably doesn't matter all that much, as long as it's in the panel somewhere and not perched up above it, where it's completely separate. But, you know, maybe future experimentation will shed more light on that. Uh, this is just where I'm at at the moment. So the other thing that I've done, and you might notice that I've got these surrounds. Now they look a little bit like waveguides. I didn't really intend it as a waveguide. The reason I actually put these on is because I was worried about the output from the panel. Remember, some of this is low frequency. These panels play down to around about 150 hertz. And 150 hertz is low enough that the sound can completely wrap around. Uh, my thinking was that some of the energy out of the panel could come out and affect the actual BMR driver. So I thought I'll just add some little wings around the outside and see if that makes much of a difference. Well, it does. And I've done some measurements and I'll put them up on the screen now and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's the first measurement. Now, I took this with the measurement mic pointed straight at the tweeter at a distance of around about a foot, 30 centimeters. Um, I didn't measure it. It's consistent across the various measurements, though I didn't move it in between. So uh, I know that the overall measurement here looks fairly terrible. Um, I'll explain that in a second. Uh, what we're really interested in is here from about 8,000 hertz and upwards. So. In this example, which is the BMR driver and no surround, we can see there's a dip here at about eight and a half kilohertz, and then it rises strongly until a peak at around 13, and then starts to drop off again uh, up until 17, 18 kHz there. Now, when I added the surround, I got this. Uh, again, all the mid range is pretty similar. And then what you can see is that the 
the dip here is more severe for some reason, but it's also lower in frequency. So this is now 7.6 kilohertz and the response, which is clearly the BMR driver, rises very strongly uh, and rises sooner in the frequency range. And this is pretty much what you might expect from a waveguide driver. Well, one of the points of the waveguide is that it reinforces the sound, particularly at the lower end of that driver's uh, frequency range, what it's playing. So that's, I suppose, not unexpected. And then it peaks a little bit lower again, just under 12 kilohertz, and then drops off sooner as well. So is that actually a good thing? Uh, I'm not sure, possibly not. The whole reason I installed this BMR driver is because I wanted to extend the high frequency. So what this is giving me is a stronger sort of lower end of that high frequency, but less upper end of the high frequency. So that's probably not great. I've ran just the tweeters. So this is actually just a sweep from eight kilohertz and upwards. So really not getting any panel in this measurement. You can see the orange, which is no surround uh, here. And it's exactly the same, right? When you add the surround or the waveguide, as I perhaps should be calling it, you get uh, the whole thing shifts down in frequency. You get a bit stronger at the lower end of its range uh, at the expense of the upper end of its range. Exactly the same. Now, finally, I did the same measurements, uh, not quite at the listening position, but more far field. So back near the couch where I normally sit, this is the uh, frequency. And as you can see from this position, it's a, it's a lot more flat across the whole frequency range, still with some decent dips and things because the DSP was set to make the best possible uh, output at the actual listening position and this isn't it so uh, but overall it's a lot flatter than what we were seeing earlier where it's kind of up here and dips down and a big smiley face there so this is without the surround and then I added the surround uh, again all these mids are pretty much the same you can see here with the surround it adds a couple of decibels from around eight kilohertz here. And it actually does drop off a bit earlier, but it doesn't look quite as bad as it did up close. Um, so from this point of view, I'd say, oh, you know, maybe this is not too bad, but I still think I would like to extend this all the way out to 20 kilohertz if I can. So I think what's on the agenda now is to play around with that waveguide and see what uh, shaping that I can come up with that might actually push this out further into the high frequency rather than just boosting down here. If at all, like maybe the best solution is literally none like this. And having said that, maybe the best solution is a different high frequency driver altogether. Uh, I said in the last video, I'm open to trying multiple drivers to, to get that right. This is just the first one. So I'm just going to see what I can do with it and then move on from there, at least knowing that this is a yes or a no. Um, that's all. Lots of talking in this one. So apologies if that was boring as shit. But um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. And if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe and catch the next one. See you next time.